Here's a bag I picked up from Goodwill recently. It's obviously a camera bag. Let's take the contents out and look at it. Well, here we go. It looks like a video camera, but it's not. It's a 35 millimeter camera. Some of you remember a couple of these videos on YouTube by people with very similar items, but slightly different controls and features, but pretty much the same. I had a chance to pick this one up very cheap from Goodwill. And it was a pretty complete package, so I picked it up. And this even has the uh, original owner's manual in it. Notice it says Walkman. That's, I believe, a Sony trademark, so I'm not sure how they'd feel about using that, but we've got the original owner's manual. We have the 35mm camera that looks suspiciously like a video camera. Tripod. We have some uh, stereo earplugs with foam buds. Tripod instruction. And we even had a package of 400 speed film from CVS. One was gone, the others are in there. So we might fiddle around with that here in the part of the video. Let's take a closer look at some of these things. Might as well get the tripod out of the way first. Little instruction sheet. It shows it all connected. Let's assemble the unit on the tripod and see how it looks. Here's basically what it looks like with the included tripod attached. Not bad really. Fairly decent little tripod. We would expect a 35 millimeter camera to look something like this 90s 35 millimeter camera of mine from I don't know 98 or 99 the Nikon N60 but it sure as heck looks a lot more like my Sony Hi8 video camera from uh, early 1990s. Very close to it. So it does not look like your standard 35 millimeter camera. And it can play compact cassettes. Looking at the instructions, 35 millimeter camera. You can pause your screen and look at these. Like I say, it shows Walkman, but that's a Sony trademark term. There's some differences between the little uh, drawings and mine. Since this shows number eight here on the left page as a remote control sensor, but mine does not have such a thing. And it does show an optional remote control, which mine did not come with. Although there's an embossment on the bottom that looks like it means remote control. Maybe that's on all of them, whether it had it or not. Large viewfinder, so you can see all of the particulars. There's also a warning not to use the 3 volt DC adapter with batteries in it. The interior drawing. Just some of the things you see on the LCD panel. Attaching the strap, loading the batteries. Four double A's, two are for the camera, and two are for the cassette player. And it's just a player, it doesn't record. Loading the film. Since this came with some rolls of film, I'm just going to try it. What the heck? Using 
the camera. Red eye reduction. We'll be using that today. Self timer. We'll probably be using that. Eight seconds. Auto flash. Charging indicator. Remote control, which, like I say, this did not come with the remote control unit. Kind of wish it had. That might have been fun to try out. Rewinding the film. Cassette tape playback. Karen storage. Troubleshooting. Specifications. 35 millimeter camera DX coated film. Really isn't a lot of detail here. Lens is f4.5, 28 millimeter. 900 grams. And then the instructions are repeated in uh, Spanish. There's no date on here and no manufacturer's name. I noticed in the instructions when they were showing the viewfinders that they showed a photograph here a little pictogram of something there and I said well that's silly it's got a plastic back there's no viewfinder there I finally realized they meant that was inside so it's easy enough to unscrew it and take a look in there so that is how that works the light comes in and hits this one and goes out through there simple enough that explains the pictogram. So looking around the camera more closely, the front of it, you have your lens cap. Oh, and I finally figured out, if you want to turn the camera on and off, what well, would normally be the focus ring turns it on and off. That's on and off. So we have our um, camera there. I don't know if you can see that. F4.5 28 millimeter lens. It's a little difficult to see, but there actually is a marking down there in red on or off to turn the camera on or off. And Red eye reduction pre flash. And right here is the light sensor. That's kind of the front. Underneath, uh, warning we have a tripod socket, we have battery compartment, two double A's for the camera, and two double A's for the Walkman. I think that little embossed thing is show that it's for remote control, but I don't know. And a little stereo headphone indicator. And a couple of QC things made in China. Up on top we have our V3000. There's the shutter button. That's for your 3 volt DC source. Power for the cassette player and volume for the cassette player. Lift that up. You have your cassette compartment. And play, fast forward, and stop. Around the back we'll have our LCD panel and we'll look at that here closely. We'll have a socket for the a jack for the headphones. We have two viewfinders. Oh, they're horrible. And we might try and look through them, but 
They're just really bad. Here's the main part of the viewfinder which goes back here. I can't really picture the opportunity you would need to look through this. It really doesn't make sense. And here's our speaker for the cassette player. And here's the front compartment for film. Uh, your take up spool here, your sprockets. Your film goes there. You have to do that every time turning it on or off to get it to do anything, as I have found through uh, testing and trial and error. And that button's what opens it. All right, when we turn on the display, you can see it's set to the first exposure battery indicator and the flashing icon is I believe means there's no film in there pressing this button we can get a red eye reduction symbol pressing it again we can get to the self timer symbol or off and when you want to rewind there'll be some arrows coming out here to show that it's rewinding and maybe we'll just try one of those rolls of film to see what happens and you can do a mid roll rewind by pressing that button there all right let's test the cassette player here I'll turn it on Hold that up push eject I don't know if I mentioned, obviously it has a little um, palm grab strap and the, urge, the people who had it obviously put the carrying strap on it. I hate carrying straps. They even kept the little plastic bag this came in. They kept everything, but I don't know how much it cost and I don't know where they bought it from. I wish they'd had some paperwork in it. Here's our speaker. Volume. Like I said, I think it's stereo. If it's not stereo, it's dual mono. I really don't know. It's off speed. I can tell you that. forward and stop so the cassette player works um, after a fashion I guess you'd say you can see the little connection wire right here from the shutter button which is on the other side of that you can see that run down to the camera control there trying to get inside and look at the cassette compartment but there really isn't much I can see in there from these angles you can just pretty much see the uh, record the uh, playback head not a lot else Well, it came with uh, some box of three rolls of film. It looks like at one time there were four and someone used one of the rolls. 400 speed film from CVS. It expired and developed before September 2004. And 
This is from 1998 CVS, so might kind of date this camera here. Well, I took out a roll of film out of the little CVS box. As long as we have some, we might as well try and load some. How much of this you'll be able to see. Let's see here. How is it? Like that. Lay it over the sprockets. I don't know. Well, maybe I'll try and take a picture of a little remote control guy here. It's impossible to see through this viewfinder. I'll try and get you a hint of what I'm seeing, but uh, it's ridiculous. Really, really difficult. Well, something happened. Flash went off anyway. And now, according to that, we're at two. It takes, it says up to eight seconds for the charge capacitor to reload. I'll try another one here. Well, I found one thing out. Each time I press the shutter and release it, I have to actually turn the camera off and back on again before it will take the next picture. I just can't wait eight seconds for the charge capacitor and then press that again. It just does not work. Let's go to timer. Let's set it on a timer mode and see what happens. Since I haven't turned the camera back off and on, I'm not sure it'll do anything. And it won't. Turn the camera off. Back on again. Well, it's still on timer anyway. It didn't reset back to normal. So maybe this will work this time. Or not. And that did work. How about that? The oh, timer does work. Well, I think I'll drag this around and try and take a pic take pictures of a few things and see what, if anything, comes out on this old 2004 film. And uh, just for heck, I'll take it to CVS and get it developed. Probably an additional waste of money there, but hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. I don't know what, if anything, you can see in this large viewfinder. It's very blurry, upside down, of course. But we'll give it a shot. Well, it might be doing something, I'm just not sure. This is looking through the smaller viewfinder. It's really difficult to catch that LCD screen on camera. I noticed that little film direction thing, I forget what the instructions call it, has changed since the last shot. Um, I don't know if that means something or not. Let me take another shot and see what happens. Aha! Uh -huh. It does move with each shot. I never noticed that. Whether that means the film is advancing, maybe. So if I put it on a timer... Maybe that timer will go off. Oops. 
There's some lines that showed up there. And now the battery's blinking. rewinding It stopped rewinding and turned off. Well, let's open it up, see where we're at. Well, it seems to have uh, done its thing here. Boy, it's been a long time since I shot any film. Anyway, I guess what I'll do is. I'll take this old uh, DX code, which is what the instruction said it needed. 400 speed film, just for fun. I think I'll take it to CVS, just to keep it pure for prints. And see if any of those shots came out. Who knows? Well, it's been almost two weeks since I took those photographs and took them to the uh, CVS for development and the ones I took right here at my little video table didn't come out right at all I think that I was just too close but they came out a little bit that's the little guy with the name tag and there's the camera another close up of the camera and there's the little guy by himself I was just too close on the other hand when I took the little camera and walked around the house and the outdoors, these came out totally acceptable. I was very surprised that they all came out like this. Some of these you might remember, um, you could see in that viewfinder as I was doing it. I mean, these were as good as anything I could expect from a old cheap camera and a film that expired in 2004 I think. I mean that's quite surprising. I don't know what I did on that one. Into the sun. And there were some that didn't come out. I walked around and got some of my old vintage equipment. But no, they were pretty good. Pleasantly surprised. A little too close there, but... So I was really surprised and very pleased. Well, that's been the... E camera V3000 suspiciously looking like a video camera but it's not 35 millimeter camera and cassette player with photographs from the camera hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching bye oh and it cost me a little over $15 at CVS to get that old 2004 film developed so no small price for this video. Thanks. Bye.